I guess pick up where we left off and so if there's questions or issues or problems or questions. No point in asking because you never answer. Okay, so if you remember what we were talking about last time. idea of power series, which are of the form some constant coefficient of, let me call it A still. Something like that, or maybe well, Something like that, or maybe um, something like that. So, so in other words. It's like an infinitely long polynomial. The polynomial has infinite degree. We have a constant term, which could be zero. We have a linear term, could be zero. We have quadratic term, given term, and so on. Maybe it fits shifted by some translation. So instead of being uh, you know, x minus the center, it could be something like that. Okay. So, so we have, so the, this, these give us some kind of, so in, in some sense, this, this is a series where the series depends on a variable, but in another sense, it's a kind of a function if it converges. Right? So there's two different ways of looking at the same thing. Um, so let me do, I guess, go over an example. So these, these might... Well, no, they might. They do. So there's three possibilities. Either it converges only at x equals 0. This is very correct. There's sort of no point to such a series. But I could give you something that blows up really fast and will only converge at x equals 0. Um, or it converges to be on some interval x minus c is equal to zero between about x minus c less than some radius. And maybe this is less than or equal to, maybe it's not at both ends, whatever, or it converges to everything. Convert, ver, ver. So this R is called the radius of convergence, the interval might include one or both endpoints, it might not. Um, so you have to check that separately. Okay? Uh, and it's possible that C is zero. So I guess this case is just R and C. Okay. So this is radius of convergence. It's called a radius rather than a width or a half width, because in fact, if x is a complex number, then this is an actual circle. 
So these make perfect sense for complex numbers, which we'll deal with later in the course. But when these are complex numbers, this is an actual radius because it's a circle on, or a disk on which this converges. But in our case, we're only talking about intervals because, you know, the circle in a line is like this. Okay. I don't know. You guys are looking very polite. Uh, so, maybe I should do an example or two. Maybe I should shut off my phone. Okay, so say we have, say we have something like, uh, and, and, and it doesn't really matter what n starts at in terms of where does it converge, because we only care about what it does at the end, but for definiteness, let's just started at zero. Say I have something like uh, minus 2 to the n uh, x. Well, actually, let's absorb that. Let's say I have 2x minus 1 to the n uh, times n. 5 to the n. So, so there's a, a series, for example. And we want to know for what x, so what is the interval of convergence? Again, I want to emphasize that this is defining a function and we want to know where does this function make sense. This is also defining, we want to look at it one way, it's defining a function of x, which only makes sense possibly for certain values of x, it doesn't make sense for others. Or you can look at it as a whole bunch of series. Either way, it's the same question. So, what do we do? Yes, the ratio test is a good idea. So I, I start with the ratio test, which means that I want to know uh, what happens as n goes to infinity of the n plus first term divided by the nth term. And I'm going to write it this way. So the n plus first term, unfortunately I've used a here. Oh well, sorry. Uh, this A is not that A. Um, so, we want to take the limit. I need to leave a little more room. Right, limit. Of what happens when we change N to N plus 1. And divide by what happens when we divide by that. So I can put n 5 to the n there, 2x minus 1 to the n there. And then I do some algebra to simplify this thing. So this 2x minus 1 to the n plus 1 is divided by that guy, leaving me just the 2x minus 1 on the top. I still need to take the limit. So I've taken care of that. The 5 to the n, 5 to the n plus 1 on the bottom divides the 5 to the n on the top, giving me a 5 here. The n plus 1 here divides that and nothing cancels. And then I take the limit. So in the limit, 2x minus 1 over 5 has no n's in it, so that doesn't change. And this limit is 1. So that's easy. So that tells me that 2x minus 1 over 5 is my ratio, the limit of my ratio. So for very large n, this looks like 2x minus 1 over 5. And, or no, sorry, this over the next one looks like 2x minus 1 over 5. We go down by this factor every time, 
So this will converge if this ratio is less than 1. So this will be less than 1 exactly when 2x minus 1 absolute value is less than 5, which is the same thing as saying 2x minus 1 is between 5 and minus 5. And I'm going to put this up just a little bit. No, I guess I'm not. I'll go to the next board. So 2x minus 1 is between plus or minus 5. In fact, you can sort of read off the answer from this. Well, let me do it in. It's not absolute. It's going to be absolute out. And so I add 1 to both sides. And now I divide by 2. Uh, 3 minus 2. So for sure, this series will converge absolutely when x is between minus 2 and 3. The question is, so and it diverges when x is bigger than 3 and when x is less than minus 2. But we want to know what happens if x equals 3 or x equals minus 2, because in that case, this ratio will be 1. So we have to handle those separately. Is it clear to everyone why I have to do this? Okay. So we handle those two things separately. When x is, say, 3, the series becomes, let's do x equals 3 here. When x equals 3, the series becomes uh, 6 minus 1 to the n, that's 5 over n times 5 to the n, right? Maybe I should write this as 6 minus 1. And so this cancels that. And this divergence. Because it's the harmonic series. Or if you prefer, it's a P series with P equals 1. If, I guess, if x equals minus 2, then the series becomes. Uh, minus 4 minus 1, which is minus 5 to the n. But maybe I should write it that way. Minus 4 minus 1 to the n. 5 to the n is n. Uh, well, actually, there's a little problem here anyway. When n equals 0, this thing blows up. So maybe it should start at 1. Doesn't matter since it diverges anyway. So again, this is minus 5 to the n over 5 to the n gives you a minus 1 to the n. Which is an alternating series. It's decreasing the limit n goes to infinity of 1 over n is 0, so it can be So, that means that the interval of convergence goes from
integral input convergence does not include 3, but it does include minus 2. Almost always, but not always, one end will be an alternating series and the other one won't. The reason it's not always is maybe if the power of x is even, so instead of having an n here, I have a 2n, something like that, then it won't be an alternating series. You have a you square or minus 1, you still get 1. Alright? Is that clear? So this is fairly straightforward, fairly mechanical. Just go through the ratio test and you check both ends and there you go. Not a lot of deep thought involved here, just a lot of manipulation. Any questions on how to do this kind of thing? Of course they can be a little more complicated, maybe, you know, the series, you need to do the integral test to check one of the ends or something a little more complicated, but the idea is always the same. You do the ratio test, you solve the resulting inequality, then you check the two series that correspond to the end, and you get an answer. I don't know. You guys are very blank. Okay, so if there's no questions on these, let me move along. Is it, is it clear? Okay. So, there are a couple of power series. Well, we can just start with one. There's a couple of power series that we know what they add up to. So if I take the most simple power series, All the coefficients are 1. This is the geometric series. With the ratio x. And so, in fact, we know that this adds up to 1 over 1 minus x. When x is less than 1. If x equals 1, you can check, but it diverges in both cases. If x equals plus 1, then we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is plus infinity. If x equals minus 1, we get 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1. And the, the partial sums alternate between 1 and 0, so that doesn't converge. But for x less than 1, this series equals that function. So we know, we know exactly, and it's important now because we're adding it up that we know where it starts. It still converges if we start here at x to the tenth, but it doesn't converge to this. So in fact, let's, let's ask that. What is the sum of x to the n? Let's start at x to the 10. Is some function we know? What function is it? I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. It's a geometric series. What's the ratio? The ratio is x. But a, the, the a in the geometric series is not 1. So this guy is a geometric series with ratio x. So remember, a geometric series in general, uh, all raised, uh, well, okay, I need a place to write. So a, 
general geometric series looks like this. All right, this is the and in sum that. Well, in this case, this guy A is this guy is a geometric series with ratio one and a one. This guy is also with ratio x and a equals one. This guy is also a geometric series. What's its ratio? Somebody said x. And what's the first term? X to the ten. So this sum is x to the ten over one minus x. You can see that in two ways. One way, as you can see, this is a geometric series with ratio x and a factor x to the 10. You can also see that this is the same, let me write it here, this is the same as I can factor the x to the 10 out the other series I already have. Yeah? So if it's a geometric series starting at zero, yeah. Because A, so a geometric series is always, let's go back to this one. A geometric series looks like if we're starting at n equals zero, like that. This is r to the 0 and r to the 1. So if we start index at 0, then of course a is the first term. Sometimes it looks a little funny, but yeah. So if I change this index to a 3, then it's not a geometric series starting at 0. We have to fiddle it. So either you can factor out the a r q or not, as you like. Okay. Uh, I'm going to erase this. So, people okay with this? Are, are people a little bit iffy on geometric series still? He is. She's not. You're in between iffy and not. Um, well, I can't. I mean, if you have a question, I'm happy to answer it. But if you are so lost that you can't formulate the question, it makes life a lot harder than what you just said. Oh, okay. So we have this. So, so today is really geometric series day, but hiding in the context of power series. So suppose I had, instead of that, something that looked like uh, Well, let me not write it as a sum. Suppose I had a polynomial that looked like x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth. Let's start it. Let's not start it. Plus x to the eighth, like that. Can we figure out what this sums up to? Hint? Yes. Again, it's a geometric series. May not quite look like a geometric series, but it is. What's the ratio? X squared. X squared. What's A? What's the leading term? X squared. X squared. So what's the sum? Not very hard. Um, so again, it's just a geometric series. You can write this as a geometric series. We can write it either n equals 2, 2 plus n equals 1, to infinity, max to the 2n. This doesn't look quite like a geometric series the way it's written, but if you think of this x to the 2n as x squared to the n, and then I want to factor out the first x squared because this begins. So, 
again, it's the same manipulations as all along. So we can plug in things here and get new series. Or we can shift it. Let me use one very similar to the one I just did a while ago, but not exactly the same. Sometimes you write this, sometimes you don't. Is this clear? Is it, number one, was his objection clear? And then my rebuttal? You're stupid, don't say that! <laughs> so, it's a good point, it's just something we usually leave off. 
because we know we can figure it out when we need to know what it is. But if I just blindly start using this for x equals 7, I'm going to get very strange answers. Okay, so this function is just another way to write this function. But on the domain, uh, so what is this? This is, uh, let me just write it this way. On this domain. This equality only holds on this domain. This one holds on a bigger set of values. This one blows up when x is 3. This one also blows up when x is 3, but it also blows up a lot of other times. So in some, in some, in some sense, these power series are more restricted because we have functions which are defined on much larger domains when we write them this way than they are in terms of 0. But we will see in a little while that they're still useful on the domains where they're defined. Right now it just seems like we're writing stuff we already know in another way. And we won't get past that until after the exam. So, so one thing that we've done here in order to manipulate these series into new series, I guess let me do one other one. Obviously, if I have an alternating, oops. I have somebody like that, which is the sum n equals zero infinity minus one to the n, x to the n, what's this series at? Sorry, that's me. Yes? alternates in sign, it's still a hiding geometric series. In fact, a lot of these power series are really just geometric series in a hidden format. There are other ones that we will manipulate, but for today, almost everything we're doing is some kind of geometric series in a hidden form. So, so the, what we've done so far is Multiply these series by some terms, like this, uh, sorry, like this, or make a substitution, x to the 2n, I mean, x, replace the x with an x squared, or with a minus x, or something like that. Already that gives us a bunch of different power series that look slightly distinct. We can also manipulate them further. Suppose I have something like, let me do it over here. Suppose I have something like, so instead of giving you a series and having you guess what it is, Let's start with the series we know and see and derive something new. So suppose I start with this one. Yeah, not writing what I'm thinking. So I start with this guy. And I decide to take the derivative of each term. And I'll get something slightly different. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of x, well, is 0. Derivative of x is 1. 
derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, derivative of x to the fourth is 4x four cubed, etc. In fact, let me write the other representation in the middle here. So if I take the derivative in general, I have n x to the n minus 1 for n equals 1 to infinity. The general term is n x to the n minus 1. But that should equal the derivative of this. So the derivative of this is 1 over 1 minus x squared times minus 1 uh, times the minus minus. Right? The derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 minus x to the power of minus 1, so I get minus 1 minus x to the power of minus 2 times the derivative of minus x. So now we actually have another power series sitting here that we know how to add up. We could shift this one a little bit. This is the same as uh, if we want to start at 0, uh, then this n is this n uh, plus 1. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, did I get that right? Something's wrong here. No, it's what did I do wrong? Oh, no, that's right. Yeah. The limit of the term, of the nth term, not if it's less than 1. Again, this only makes sense when the absolute value of x is less than 1. If x is bigger than 1, this is all garbage. So when x makes when this sum makes sense, this stuff is okay. When the sum doesn't make sense, it's nonsense. Because you're adding infinities and taking derivatives of infinite things, um, and you just come up with craziness. You can make some amount of sense out of it, but you have to work very hard. And so we just ignore that stuff. Um, for now. So you can do stuff with it, but you have to be very careful. And that's well beyond what we do in this class. Um, so this manipulation only makes sense when x is less than 1. So now we have another series here that we can obtain from an old one by uh, taking derivatives. We can also, I mean, and again, I can get another series by taking a derivative again. Right? I can get a series for 1 over 1 minus x cubed, and so on. Right? We can also go another way. values of x. Suppose I wanted to represent the arc tangent as a series. Well, I remember, I hope you remember, that this is the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx plus a constant. Let's forget about the constant right now. Or if you like, I can put a t here and integrate it over the x. So we can use this same kind of idea to derive a series for the arctangent. Well, 
میگه So we have to do it in stages. What do we need first? You said something. First term. First term. Well, no, I don't want to get the first term and then the second term. Yeah. Okay. But let's use the fact that we already know another series. So, again, let me write out, well, just to emphasize what we're doing, we're integrating each term of this series here. So when n is, n is 0, I have a 1. When n is 1, I have a minus x squared. When n is 2, I have a plus x to the fourth minus x cubed. Uh, right, that's what I'm doing. But I'm actually going to do it in this form. It's easier. So when I integrate, what happens? Well, I pick up a constant, because I get a constant of integration. When I integrate 1, I get an x. When I integrate x squared, I get a minus x cubed over 3. When I integrate x to the 4th, I get an x to the 5th over 5. When I integrate x to the 6th, I get an x to the 7th over 7, and so on. If we want to do it sort of all in one shot, minus 1 to the n is a constant because we're integrating with respect to x. So this is some constant that I'm not telling you yet. And then when I integrate, 
I get minus 1 at the end, that's just some number, plus 1 or minus 1. And then x to the 2n is integral to x to the 2n plus 1, but I have to divide by 2 So we did some magic trick here. Well, it's written right there. I can't write it again. So we don't know at the moment what this constant of integration is, but we do. What is this constant of integration in this case? How can we figure it out? Okay, again, I'm claiming that the arc 10 of x is some number that we don't know, but we do, plus this series. Uh, I guess we start. Yes, it's zero. Yeah. Is it power over two? No. Good guess, though. So how can we figure it out? Yeah. Exactly. So we know that the arc tan. So this is four x small. None of this stuff makes any sense if x is bigger than 1. But if x is less than 1, then this is true. We know that r tan of 0 has to be that same constant plus sum n equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n, 0 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And that's not 0. So c is whatever the arc tangent of 0 is. What angle has a tangent of 0? 0. So c is 0. So in fact, this constant doesn't matter. It's 0. So what we've just done figured out that the arc tangent of x is um, that. So, 2n plus 1 is just a clever way to write odd. So this is, emphasize this, x minus x cubed over 3 plus x 5 over 5 minus x 7 over 7 plus blah blah. So what good is this? Well, one thing that this is good for is if we don't, if we aren't able to actually calculate a value of the arc tangent directly. I mean, why do you think? Well, your calculator is now smarter, but if, what do you think your calculator is doing when you ask for an arc tangent? It doesn't just magically know it; it needs to calculate it. Current calculators use a smarter version of this, but you can just calculate this series. So if I want to know the, the arc tangent of 0.03, I plug in 0.03 and I compute a series like this with enough terms to whatever calculate whatever accuracy I want. So this is what's going on. Well, not exactly this because there are better ways, but something like this is what's going on inside the calculator when you want to calculate the arc tangent. You transform something transcendental into something arithmetic. Um, Newton actually tried to figure out the series for, I don't know, maybe the tangent, by trying to solve, by trying to invert this series. But he was a smart guy, and he 
make good progress on that. That's a little harder than what we want to do. Um, other things we can do is we can multiply and divide them and so on. So we'll do more of this manipulation of function and series after the exam. Um, oh, one other announcement. Sorry. I'm going to hold extra office hours tomorrow. I still have office hours today, but I will hold office hours tomorrow as well.